A year or was it two years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. When we, we blew us all out with some of his diagrams. And yes. of course, he's one of the contributors to, uh, to the new book. And actually, a lot of the facts and figures, or a number of them, are from Vaslov in there, who gave That's a speech cool. earlier. So I was sitting out there during TED-8, and Richard was talking about this book project. And uh, I instantly wanted to be a part of it. Um, I felt I shared Richard's vision. Um, Richard did maps. He did travel guides, um, directories. He helped people navigate. Uh, and that's what I do, but in a totally different world. Later in the conference, I gave a talk, and I showed a couple of things. I'm just going to give you a real quick glimpse so you could see where I was. Um, well, that's where we all are, actually. But this is where I was. Uh, so this is a map of that book, uh, all the different subtopics in it. And you can go and find my chapter on ecology and, and biodiversity and so on. Uh, I'm hoping that we will get something like this up on the Understanding USA site as well. Um, and then the, that's one thing called the hyperbolic tree. It lets you navigate large hierarchies. Uh, a very different kind of thing, but it's, it is uh, an instance of the same genre. Um, and we were at Park working on a genre of devices for navigating large amounts of information. This one is for large tables. You, this is the old table, right? Numbers. Nothing. Graphics, everything. Um, and you can do things like sort and see patterns pop up. Uh, right across here, you see patterns. You see patterns. You know, these are all related. This is baseball players. It doesn't really matter, though. You see the patterns, and you instantly know there's correlations. I sort by teams. Um, division and league are sort of related, but there's something going on in New York, Chicago. I sort by position. I see some other quantitative variables related. Uh, who's making all these errors? Shortstops. They're just not really that bad a player. It's just hard to be a shortstop. Um, so enough of that. <laughs> these and other things we were working on at Park at the time were motivated by a very simple insight. If you design around what we were before we were born, we'd all be able to perform like Einstein. And do we ever need that? The world has problems. It always does, actually. And in Einstein's world, words, the significant problems we face cannot be solved at the same level of thinking we were at when we created them. One day, sitting in my office after TED-8, a call comes in. Hello, Richard Saul Werman. Blah, 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 blah. Did you enjoy my party? Yes, blah, 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 blah. I started chattering like the little boy in Texas that had got a call from a girl that, had, that I had a crush on. Um, not long after, he invited me to be an information architect. Wow. Issues were assigned, and I got the topic of natural resources and environmental issues. Um, I threw myself into the topic. I wanted to travel inside out. Um, I'm sure I pegged a few Millie Nathans on Amazon. Um, their profiling only seems to recommend uh, environmental topics to me anymore. I was getting really depressed. And you want to know why? I was reading Vaclav's books, <laughs> and a lot of other people's. Um, but I did get through it and arrived somewhere where I could work. And a line by Nabokov is what kept me from feeling like a schmuck for taking such a tortured route. I do know more than I do say in order to say what I do say. I had a couple of uh, key aspirations for the chapter, a couple about content and a couple about the execution of the chapter. One is that. Science is not the green category in Trivial Pursuit. It's about structure, models, relationships, connections between one thing and everything else. Um, everything's connected in the subtle graph of everything, or something Sagan-esque. Um, and the second thing was a uh, point of view issue. What was my point of view? Here I do have to credit Vaclav. And uh, ironically, Paul Ehrlich, who Vaclav lambasts for being arrogant, um, um, Basically, it goes something like, here's my point of view, and then when you hear two guys debating, one over here and one over here, and you hear them debating, spit coming from their mouths, you kind of go, oh, they're both wrong, the truth is in the middle, and you walk away. This is the worst possible thing that could happen. Because in fact, in ecology, just like in a lot of other topics, they're both right. And when we need to listen to what's right and what each side. So that was what I wanted to get across. The second two things that I wanted to do about the execution had to do about 
uh, bringing interaction into print. I was an interactive person. Uh, could links be put in so connections were emphasized? Um, and then the second thing was I wanted a lot of data on there, a lot of data, high density, show people a lot of stuff, uh, and see whether, whether you could prevent the pages from feeling bloodless, even though there were a bunch of numbers and uh, bars. Uh, when I got down to work, I realized, hey, I'm not a graphic designer. Uh, I'm an inventor, designer of novel interactions. I better find one that won't shanghai me from the surface. Um, I talked to many grand graphic designers, uh, finally found Jean Orlebeck. Uh, I was in awe, awe immediately. She had beautiful in her repertoire, and I wanted beautiful. Um, the earth is beautiful. That's what's at stake. Um, and I wanted that atmosphere in the chapter. Then she came in, and I showed her just a couple of sketches. Actually, I talked for two or three hours, but I'm not going to do that now. <laughs> so one sketch um, was kind of the content sketch, uh, this one. And this was my organization of all the subject matter into consumption and consequences. And basically, we're consuming all these things from the Earth, and it has impacts on the Earth. And that has consequences, and in turn, it causes us to make changes. That's always been happening at all stages. At first, it happened locally, and we moved on to some other place we could ruin. And then it happened regionally, and now it's happening globally. We can't go anywhere. Um, and so that's what I felt. That's obviously what Vaclav was saying. Um, and I started realizing there are some forms I wanted to, cycles and circles. And all the things I did fit this model, and then that started moving me to images of the spreads with a circle in the center moving inside out. Um, then I showed Jean these thumbnail sketches of all of the spreads I could think of at the time. That's Nigel's penny on there. The penny is as big as a world, and uh, that's the power of representation. And not that this is... Um, so if you look here, uh, up here, this is obviously the beginning intro spread. I wanted to organize all the topics into a story and then point with icons to all the other spreads so that people could travel around in the uh, chapter. And um, I wanted very dense ones. This was going to be my Menard. It's the food spread. Menard is, uh, did a famous infographic about Napoleon's march in Russia. The inbound journey was pretty good. Uh, the outbound journey didn't look so good. And that's how I felt about the Green Revolution, 50 to the 90s. We did great. We kept up with the population. I'm not so sure about the next 30 or 40 years. That's depressing. Um, and um, I started seeing things like water and oil being related, um, and the form started being related. I started seeing that we were going to organize all things in the tree of life, and that we were doing serious damage to that tree. And in the end, I felt the project was about this balancing of asking, observing things that you had to notice. Stop debating what this guy I once said, side, the catastrophist. See what he's saying, and then think about where we're going to go from there. And that's the question, you know, being open that we don't really know the answers, but we better start asking. So that was, that's what I saw. I'm not going to show you any pages from the book. Um, I'm going to tell you how I feel now, after. Uh, you have the book. Uh, one thing I want to say about it is I really want to ta thank my wife, Carlin, and my daughters, Layla and Jaden, for all the time it took me to participate. Um, there is one big gap that I just couldn't close in the end, and it's a natural gap that I should have known was unclosable, but it was worth trying because it may, it, in the end it leaves me with a big insight. I set out to create an interactive feel in print. Um, and in some ways it's there, but in the end it isn't because it's not interactive in the original sense, because there's, there's, just take the links. They show associations from one topic to another, but when you click on them, they don't go. Uh, with software, when you click, a magic is invoked, except in the early days of the web, which we're still in. Uh, the magic arranged well can put um, control over direction and viewpoint in the hands of the reader and not the author. Last week, I asked uh, my engineering team to put together a concept car that would have a little bit of this feel. Uh, they chose the topic of sports, because um, it's an easy topic to kind of get into, just to give you the feel of it. Um, so here's the hyperbolic tree again, all these different kinds of sports, and if we want to see something about the NFL, we can click here, 
and go to the NFL site. It's like a portal, except it's a little bit wider than your average portal. Uh, you can go to hockey, you can get back, and you can still be in the map. Or maybe you want a different way of looking at all these different leagues, and you can move around in um, hockey and go down to the Eastern Division or back to football. Um, maybe you want to explore some statistics. And maybe you're interested in LA statistics. And so you go down the Pacific and you find the Lakers and you find your favorite player, Shaquille O'Neal. And you see some st stats about him and then you see the Lakers and then you keep going and you say, you know what, we could see all the statistics for everybody and just find Shaquille in there. He's just good. So I ought to be able to just find him in here. Even if there's 500 baseball players, I'll just you know, select the top five and just start sorting these columns until I find Shaquille. He's just the best at something. Um, here we go. Uh, field FGM. He's the best at FGM, whatever that is. There's Shaquille O'Neal. Um, maybe I want to figure out what's all the major sporting events of year 2000. Across time, here's 12 months of the year. So if we go back to the beginning of the year, uh, we can find the Super Bowl. It's over. Um, and so you can get a write-up on the Super Bowl. Or maybe you want to go this way and you're interested in, uh, oh, okay, let's just go to the all-star game for the soccer stuff and fine, that's the future. And, um, and so on. We need a wider web, don't we? It's not, a, it's not just a matter of bandwidth. Um, it's also what happens on the desktop. When, when, just to wrap up, um, I just want to say something about the concept of a concept car in this book. In the end, people can quibble over whether it's really an information atlas. You know, some people would say, if you were going to do that, how, why the hell would you have 12 information architects? Why wouldn't you have a table of contents? Um, why wouldn't you have page numbers? It's browsable, but it's not navigable. Um, it's like the early days of the web. It is a con the, and that was an amazing concept car. And the web is still that way. It's still like this. It's still an amazing concept car. This book is a concept car. Richard's book, if it perhaps falls short as a complete act, is a shot. And what matters is what comes down because of it. If the book isn't interactive within, it is about interaction after all. It's like travel guides. They sit in your hands before the world. A link that moves. Magic. Let the people see and go. For you, Richard. <laughs> thank you, thank you.